is preparing some documents that I'll sit here so that we can give you. Um, I've got this media interview in response to the special motion dated 26 September 2024 by the Honorable Tuse Mwengi, Member of Parliament for Kibwezi, West Constituency, for the removal from office by way of impeachment of Rigat Gashagwa, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. I have been invited to appear in Parliament in the National Assembly tomorrow at 5 p.m. me out of office because of other political considerations and has nothing to do with violation of the constitution it has nothing to do with gross misconduct and it has absolutely nothing to do with committing international or national crimes the people of kenya are therefore entitled by right to hear from their deputy president what is his response to those outrageous allegations again an attempt to do a public uh, public participation in a very short exercise that was done my response was not part of what was presented to the people of kenya the people of kenya were being asked to give their views as to whether the deputy president should be impeached from office and the accusations were attached but in a highly legalistic language beyond the comprehension of many Kenyans. But the response of the Deputy President was not there to enable them to make an informed decision by listening to the charges against him and listening to his response. Because the rules of natural justice demand that no man should be condemned and hurt. My lawyers will be vigorously be challenging that uh, public participation as a nullity and that does not meet the threshold of public participation as expounded by the Supreme Court of Kenya during the celebrated case of Governor Peter Wabora. Uh, the motion alleges that two years since assuming office, Rigad Gashagwa has acquired property and wealth whose estimate value is 5.2 billion. 
despite his known income by way of employment is 24 million. This is extremely outrageous. Honorable Mutuse goes ahead to give properties that he alleges are owned by one Regadi Gashagwa. I trust he was just given a document to sign. Had he taken some bit of time to do some research, he would not embarrass himself and the National Assembly. James Derito Gashagwa was the governor of Nyeri and died in Laden on the 24th of February 2017, and the U.S. Tururi was by his bedside. Prior to his death, three or four weeks before, in privacy, he wrote his will and appointed Rigadi Gashagwa as an executor of that will, jointly with Mwai Madenge, his close time buddy, who is a quantity of air, and celebrated lawyer Joroge Regeru. The three of us were tasked to manage his estates. In the will, you'll be given a copy. He did put his properties and assets and cash and anything that he owned in this world. And among the things that he did put was the Olive Garden Hotel, the thing of Beach Resort, the Queen's Gate apart Apartment, and Langata High Rise Flats. It is these four properties that the Honorable Mutuse alleges in the National Assembly that Regadi Gashagwa has acquired them after becoming Deputy President in 2022 when the Rito Gashagwa died in 2017. It is the most embarrassing allegation a member of parliament can table before the National Assembly. Those properties were constructed and were in operation when the Lady Gachagua was alive. I take this opportunity to ask for forgiveness to my late brother, James Derito Gachagua, that today, as your younger brother defends himself, he'll defile your privacy by distributing your will that you wrote in privacy that your properties that you worked so hard for many years to benefit your wives and children are now a subject of discussion and are alleged to be proceeds of corruption. How unfair, how cruel can you be to a dead man? A man who worked so hard, a man who gave his life for his family, to buy plots, to construct property, and leave them in his death for his children and his brothers and sisters. And then you go to the floor of the house and allege that those properties are production of corruption. My dear brother, Rest in peace and forgive me for having joined politics. Because were it not for politics, you would not suffer this shame. Your children are crestfallen as they see their properties being splashed in newspapers as proceeds of crime. The Olive Garden Hotel that is alleged to have been bought by Rigadi Gachagua belongs to the estate of the late James Derito Gachagua. And in his will, he directed that we sell all his properties and divide the proceeds among his brothers, sisters, wives, and children. We as 
the executors of his estate. And I want to pay tribute to lawyer Joroge Regero and Mwai Madenge for their commitment and sacrifice to the Gachagua family. Many executors who have been given properties to run by deceased people end up misusing them and depriving the beneficiaries. These two great men and myself, because my brother knew I'm an honest man and a fair person, and he knew his family, would never suffer in my hands. We were able to sell Olive Garden Hotel at 412 million and distributed the proceeds to the beneficiaries as directed in his will. We registered his will in the High Court of Kenya and were given the profit. And my late brother, in his wisdom, left regarding Ashagwa 5% of his wealth. I was therefore able to get 20 million shillings from this sale. That is money that is in my account that again I'm told they are proceeds of crime. He left my mother 5% of his wealth, another 20 million shillings. And since my mother is dead, my little brother, because he trusted me, had put in his will that I hold my mother's shares in trust. So that is another 20 million shillings in my account. Again, my late brother left me another 4% hold in trust of the children who is deceased, the late Dr. Friend Wachira Gashagwa, whose children are in South Africa. And another 16 million shillings was put in my account. My late brother gave 2% to my wife, Pastor Dakas, because of her kindness of looking after him when he was ill. All this money that has come to me from a dead brother, I'm being told are proceeds of crime. Um, Queen's, Gate, Queen's Gate Service Apartments, another property belonging to the late Kashagwa, is another property that I'm told I've bought as when I'm deputy president. That is why I have 5.2 billion worth of money. And this property, again, we sold the Cooperative Bank of Kenya, the staff retirement benefits for nearly 600 million. And this money we utilized to pay his debts. And today, as the Etika Shagwara is in heaven, he has no debt. Again, I want to thank my fellow executors, Joroge Regeru and Mwaima Thenge, for what you have done for my brother. Vipingo Beach Resort in Kilifi was Gashagwa's holiday home, a beautiful palatial resort on three and a half acres on the beach. I remember with nostalgia that he used to host us there every Christmas to enjoy ourselves. This property belongs to the estate of the deceased because ourselves have a family. We want to retain it for sentimental value so that when we visit there, we remember him. The Honorable Mutusa again goes to the in a very emotional manner quoting the Bible says that this property has been bought corruptly by the deputy president without knowing where the money has come from. I have seen some land, Rogoro Kiamariga, 1223 in Matera East constituency. To start with, Rogoro Kiamariga is not in Matera East constituency. It is in Madeira West constituency. In haste, 
to dispose of the deputy president because of political deceit and conmanship and betrayal. They could not even get it right where the land is treated. They were in such a haste to get rid of the deputy president. The land is Ruguru through Kiamariga, 1223, in Madeira West constituency. It's a two acre land. It's alleged it has a helipad. It's a lie. The land is too. And I have planted Napier grass for my daily unit. I bought it at 3.5 million shillings. Again, from my dairy farm. I have a dairy farm. 50 cows. And I do make an income of almost 1.5 million shillings every month. They afford to buy two acres of land. And I take this opportunity. Any time I've gone to the Rift Valley, in appreciation of the support I give, it gives me a cow or two. And within two years, I have the largest dairy farm in Madeira of the Kalajin people. I want to thank them for their kindness. An accusation that I've bought 40 acres of land in Kakuret, Kabraine, in Kenya, in Yeri constituency, as the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. I saw the Honorable Jiroge Wainaina, the MP for Kenny, signed the notice of motion to impeach me on the allegations, this one being among them. Had there been no malice, Jiroge Wainaina, the Honorable MP for Kenny, would have advised the Honorable Mutuse that he sold me this land in the year 2015. I have a sale agreement I'll give you with this picture. I bought this land from the Honorable Jorogi Wainaina in 2015. I was not even a member of parliament. Yet he has appended a signature that I should be impeached and go home for having corruptly bought 40 acres of land in Kakuret. In fact, the land is not 40 acres, it's actually 35. The allegation is that it's 40 acres. But that land is 35 acres. The people of Kakuret know it. I bought it from the Honorable MP for Kenny. And had he read this motion, I'm sure he would not have signed it. But as you all know, there was a lot of coercion. There was a lot of intimidation. And I'm sorry that I'm told the Honorable Inaina is admitted in hospital because of threats, coercion. He is being forced to hang a brother against his will and his conscience. These are the lies that Mutuse brought to the National Assembly and asking the people of Kenya to get rid of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya based on lies. I have seen another ridiculous allegation that the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, has since becoming Deputy President, acquired eight acres of land in Meru. That is false. What is true is that the Deputy President is a, manger, is a member of Solution Circle Limited in Meru. And for those who do not know, the deputy president is half Meru, half Kikuyu. His mother, the late mother, Kirigo Gashagwa, was born in Meru in a place called Katheri, and thereafter settled in Kiberesha. Deputy president Rigati Gashagwa sometimes is a lonely man. His father is dead, his mother is dead. 
His brother, Derito Kashagwa, the governor, died of pancreatic cancer. His brother, Dr. Fred Washira Kashagwa, died because of alcohol. His other brother, Jackson Riyani, died because of alcohol. His sisters are married. So when he goes home, many times he's lonely. And he decided to look for some land in Meru where he can go and build a house and be among his relatives, his mother's relatives. And in the process, I identified a 29-acre land and borrowed money from Solution Circle, which I'm paying every month. We'll give you documents. that I have bought from a loan that I have taken as a member of Solution Circle in Meru, the land of my mother, and which I call home. I have seen an allegation that I have a dairy farm in Nyandarwa. I don't have a single animal in Nyandarwa. I have some little land in a place called Shamata, but I'm yet to do anything about it. I think I just mentioned it to one of the, the member of parliament for that area called Gashagwa that I would like to start a dairy farm. And I think in those rumors in parliament, <laughs> the Honorable Mutuse went ahead to say that I own a dairy farm in Nyandaro. I own no such farm today, but God willing, because of the good climate in Daragua in Shamata, one day, God willing, I'll have a huge I have seen companies listed just to create an impression that Rigadi Gashagwa is doing business. I want the people of Kenya to know that Rigadi Gashagwa was a businessman before he became a politician. And he had a life, and that life is part of his history. So getting companies 15 years ago, 13 years ago, 10 years ago, and publishing them. I left university in 1989. up to the year 2002. I left for the private sector for another 15 years. In those 15 years, I was a very astute businessman. And luckily for me, maybe of you who are not that lucky, it was during the Kibaki era when things were working. The economy was strong, business environment was right, and there was room to make money. And I made money that time. Those are old companies, and they are not trading. And when I became my children, and I told them to continue doing business and not to do business with the government because I don't want conflict of interest, I want to confirm to the people of Kenya tonight that none, no company owned by Rabo Mutuse or anybody else linking the Gashagwa, the Regard family with business deals with the Kenya government. I agreed with my children that they do business with the private sector, do farming, and run the family business that I bequeath them. These companies are all listed. And just for the for clarity, because I don't think they are worth a reply, because there is nothing about them. Regarding Geshawa Foundation, as a member of parliament, I was educating orphans, I was educating children of single mothers, I was educating children of PWDs, and the education needed to continue, and I don't have the benefit of CDF money. So I started a foundation. 
the Regard Gashagwa Foundation to continue doing the work of charity. I have seen my foundation here. The Honorable Mutuse has not said what crime the Deputy President has done by having a foundation that is non-profit making. For the purposes of clarity, I'll give you the bank statement for this foundation. I have only received a total of 12 million shillings from well wishers, which have educated children, have educated students at Pwani University, and other venerable people. Dokas Regard Gashlugo Foundation. This is just an attempt to bring my family into mud. Every Kenyan know the work Dokas Regadi has done in this country for the boy child. She has opened clinics for addicted children and she gets a lot of money in her foundation. Since a decision was made that the government will not fund the office or the spouse of the deputy president, Kenyans of goodwill flock to her every day with cash donations with material donations for her to continue with a very good program she's doing of rehabilitating children in Kilifi, in Mombasa, in Nyandarwa, in Laikipia, in Nairobi, and her work is well documented. I am yet to see from the movement's motion what crime the Gadi Shagwa Foundation has done. There is no allegation, there is no evidence, there is nothing. Against the Gadi Shagwa Foundation, there is nothing. Spirit Way Limited is a company registered by Dokas Regadi that does work with the church ministries. This ministry has no traded, does not even have a bank account. It's some strong women of God who have come together. To preach the gospel. The mover of this motion has not indicated Calvary Creed International Limited, as the name suggests, is a company founded by my wife in again on evangelism and activities to do with the Church of Christ. I have not seen a single allegation against this company. Mothers of the Lord Limited. Again, this is a company incorporated my wife, Pastor Docas, in 2021 with our friends. It has never traded. It does not even have a bank account. The Anani Collective. This is a business name registered by my son, Dr. Keith Rigadi, in 2021 before I came into office. And the ideas he had, they have not yet come to fruition. So the company is dormant. I am where to see a single allegation. Apartments Limited, a company that the executors of the late Gashagua put together to manage Langata View Apartments. The late Gashagua left 80 apartments for his children in Langata and asked us to sell and the proceeds to the wives, the children, and the brothers in a formula that he gave. In a family meeting that I chaired, we agreed as a family that we should not sell the flats. We should share them so that everybody can be getting a rental income. In that formula, because of the shares he gave to me, I have 10 flats. His daughter has 10, his wife has five, another one has two, another has was one. So we did put this company together called Grand Bypass Apartments Limited. This is a company that will be managing a 
estate of the late Gashago. Again, this company has been put here by the Honorable Mutuse as a company set to manage flats belonging to a dead good man. Future of his children. And in his death, he is being haunted on nonsensical allegations simply because a decision has been made that regarding Ashagwa is no longer useful to this administration. He is a spent cartridge. His work was to help fight Uhuru Kenyatta and get President William Ruto to power. And thereafter, he is of no use, so he should be dispensed with and somebody else can be appointed. Again, it's the will of the Kenyan people. That is the viciousness that we are even fighting the dead. How cruel, how insensitive can we be? What is this power thing that you even fight the dead for you to entrench yourself in power and get rid of you are perceived political enemies. I appeal to the people of Kenya to have respect for the dead, if nothing else. People may have money, they may have power, they may have everything, but they must remember that it is very respectful to respect the dead. Please, stop haunting my late brother. Don't put him He committed no crime by working hard and leaving an inheritance for his children and entrusting his brother, Ricardo Gashagua, to look after that property. Fortis Viz Group Limited is a company incorporated in 2023 by my son, Kevin. Men. This company has not even taken off. They are still figuring out come here every day to keep me company and find out what is not happening. This company has not even started. These are young people, children. Why do you want to destroy their future? By putting their names in the press with negativity because you want to destroy their father. These are innocent boys who have decided to invest in their own country. Why do you want to destroy them? You can destroy the Gadi Geshagwa, fair enough. He has lived for 59 years. But his boys, hardly 30 years. Why do you want to destroy them? Pioneer Medical Company Group. Hey, are you bringing it to Parliament? At the roundabout at Bomas on your Itorongai. And we built this company from scratch. And it's been in existence for years. And when we stopped trading with it, we put up apartments in Koroi, in Rongai, called Rido Plaza, that are managed by this company. We collect rent. We have, I think, 40, 50. We pay tax every month. What wrong has Rido Furniture Mart done? 
Street of Plaza was called 12. Ten years before the Gadi Gashiba became deputy president. Even if you want to kill his men and make sure he's totally destroyed, why don't you pursue him for the two years he has been in office? Why do you want to go back 20 years before he became deputy president and criminalize his enterprise and his hard work? Biovet Kenya Limited is a company, again, I founded in 2009. Many years before I even went to parliament. It has not done business for the last 15 years. Not a single shred of evidence that this company has done wrong. It's not there. Murani Manufacturers Limited is a company that is founded by a character from our village and sold some shares to my wife and my children. This company has never traded in government. It has not done any business. It is actually dormant. I'm told the account has only have some shares in a company that has 132,000 shillings. Delta Merchants Limited is a company I founded in 2009 during the Quebec era. It has not done business for 15 years. We demand that you see what this company has done. Wamunyoro Investments Limited is a company named after my village in Wamunyoro which I founded in the year 2001 as a construction company. This company owns a lot of property that I bought in those years when the economy of this country was on south footing. Since I became deputy president, we ceased all activities of this company. It has not done a single transaction with anybody. The company is dormant, but it owns property. Those properties were bought and acquired long before I became deputy president. Cosme Adventure Limited is a company that was incorporated in 2018 before I became deputy president by my sons. They do what you call bulk SMS. I used to give them work when I was member of parliament to send messages to my constituents. I think they were charging me 30 cents per SMS. Some young, enterprising young people. Company 2018, it doesn't do business with government. It is not accused of any wrongdoing by anybody, anywhere. It's just name there. Royal Crimson Ventures Limited, operated in 2018 by my children to do their little business. No allegation of any wrongdoing. And next to the motion. Cruito Properties Limited, again, changing uh, the Vipingo Hotel. No Details of any acquisition, any wrongdoing, nothing. Crystal Kenya Limited, this company, I president, I gave out my shares to and my myself and my wife. We got out and asked them to continue doing business. My two children. like their father, very enterprising. Nyeri County, where I come from, we were hit badly by COVID, and all our hotels shut down. Hundreds of jobs were lost. Many people who were supplying to those hotels 
shut down. The two hotel was for sale. And my children were in. Sheetops Hotel cannot be sold. It belongs to KWS. It's a government. And the person who owned Outspan Hotel had also leased the Treetops Hotel. Got an assignment of the lease. So they don't own Treetops Hotel. AWS to Abadea Safari, then an easement to Cristo Kenya. That about Cristo Kenya Limited and my children because they are not part of this proceeding. But they have no other forum to defend themselves, so I have to defend them. They are grown ups, they should defend themselves, but they don't have the forum. They went to a bank and borrowed 600 million. The documents are there and bought a hotel, and bought the lease. And I publicly announced that my family has acquired the two hotels because there was nothing to hide. I saw no need to advise my children, like other people do, to buy the properties through proxy because this was straight business. They went and borrowed 600 million from the bank. And they were given one year moratorium, which is not over to do the renovations and all that and open the facility. But I want to thank my son, Dr. Keith Regadi. He worked very hard. That I think last month or so, I was at the treatops with the British High Commissioner to open the treatops. The treatops important to the people of Nyeri and the system. It is in the treatops hotel that Princess Elizabeth slept. And when that facility was shut down, it was very devastating to the people of Nyeri and the Abadia ecosystem. So when the people of Nyeri heard that the son of the deputy president is interested in leasing that facility from KWS and reopen it, there was joy and ululation in the Abadeas. Since this hotel opened, 45 Kenyans are back to work. The vegetables to that hotel. The local butchers are supplying me to that hotel. Come every weekend to entertain the tourists. The tourism circuit of the Abadea is back. are now being demonized as crooks, as criminals, who should not invest in their own motherland because the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya spends a lot of time in one of his functions that he has been given by the president to coordinate development partners and look for investors. Why should the deputy president go to look for foreign investors when his own children can invest at home? Children of many other people I know hide their money in Dubai and Cayman Islands. They don't want to invest here. What crime have the children of the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya committed by borrowing money from a bank. These boys are so demoralized. Asking me, Dad, why didn't you advise us? Didn't invest in one country. 
And if we dare to invest, we should. Are we criminals by virtue of being a children? That's a question my children are asking me. What crime can children of Kenya commit? Borrow money from a bank and start an enterprise and employ people. How unfair can a country be to its young population to condemn them? I'm making a million shillings or so every month. 